China's Commerce Ministry saying that restoring stability in U.S.-China trade relations is the best way to, quote, de-risk, claiming it would stabilize business expectations and increase business confidence. U.S. and EU officials often use the term de-risk to describe their relationship with China and how they're not looking to completely separate or decouple because, you know, that's been floated out there. Well, U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo is in China this week, and she said, quote, decoupling is neither in our economic or national security goals. Let's bring an Iowa congresswoman and member of the House Appropriations Committee and House Select Committee on China, Ashley Henson. Congresswoman, good morning. Good morning, Cheryl. Thanks for having me on. A couple of questions here. First off, what do we think that Gina Raimondo really accomplished on this trip? It doesn't seem like a lot. Uh, and then also a follow-up here with regards to Taiwan, because, you know, the point is being made, if China does make a move on Taiwan, they're going to end up with all that military equipment that we helped Taiwan acquire. Right. Well, uh, first of all, I think we need to start uh, acting toward China based upon what they're doing, not what they're saying. And unfortunately, that's not what we've seen out of this administration. We've seen continuous appeasement out of this administration. Um, before the secretary's visit, uh, she went in and made uh, restrictions loosened on Chinese Communist Party companies. And then state media applauded that. I think any time Chinese state media is applauding any decision by the U.S., it's probably not in our best interest. So they're making concessions to get in the room. They're not getting any accountability out of these visits. In fact, um, they're making us weaker on the global stage as a result of these visits. Um, we need to start treating China based, again, on what they're doing, not on what they're saying. They are lying to us. They are spying on us. They are cheating, and they are ramping up their military at a rate that should be alarming to the entire country and the entire world. The so why um, is I'm calling on the, the Biden administration to speak loudly and carry a big stick. I think that's the policy that we need to have toward China, oh. because they are escalating. As far as Taiwan is concerned, um, yes, it is a huge risk, and that's why our select committee has put out a whole slate of recommendations on how we can empower relationships in the region, continue to develop trade relationships with folks who do share our democratic values of freedom. That's the tactic that I think we need to be taking in the entire Indo-Pacific. Well, and I was going to ask you, I mean, you look, the, the concern here, it, it, why are these Biden administration officials and then John Kerry, who's not technically in the administration, but he is, uh, going one by one to China. Like, what is the goal here of this? I, I asked a, 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 another congressman, one of your colleagues earlier, is it because they're trying to grease the wheels for a Xi Jinping President Biden meeting here on U.S. soil? What do you think? I'm not sure what their end goal is, Cheryl, but I can tell you this. We're certainly seeing what this message is sending around the world, and it is continuing to project that global weakness and global appeasement. Uh, it's no coincidence that uh, President Putin of Russia is now going to meet with President Xi in China. Um, they are continuing to strengthen their alliance. I think that should be a huge signal around the world of what's happening in that region. So um, I'm, again, calling on the State Department to start uh, calling on uh, China for some concessions here. The status quo is way too dangerous to make. Maintain. We need to be going in and asking for accountability. Accountability for the fact that they have flown a spy balloon across our country. Accountability for the fact that they continue to send Chinese nationals across our southern border. We don't know how many of those people are, are spies and are working directly for the Chinese Communist Party. But one thing's very clear. Everything the Chinese Communist Party does is intentional, and we need to take it as such. Well, I was going to ask you about that, because we're learning that the number of illegal Chinese nationals encountered at the southern border is obviously surging under President Biden. Even in this fiscal year, there's been over 39,000 Chinese national encounters. That's a 115% increase compared to the last full fiscal year under former President Trump. Your reaction to that? Yeah. Well, President Biden clearly doesn't care who comes across our southern border, uh, whether it's a Chinese national or a Chinese spy or people on the terror watch list. We've seen an incredible surge at our southern border, and that's a direct result of the failed policies coming out of this Biden administration. Look, our border security is national security, and as a result of those failed policies, we have the cartels that are winning, the gangs that are winning, uh, drugs are pouring into our country. China is empowered because of the drug war that's happening. They are sending those precursors 
precursors to Mexico, which are then uh, fueling the cartels and their business models. So um, again, China is at the root of all of this, and it's very clear what their intention is. Their goal is by 2049, and President Xi has said this, they want to be the superior economic, military, dominant power in the world. This is all part of their giant plan to make that happen. And if we go into this uh, with eyes wide open, I think we can be successful in preserving the American dream. If we continue this campaign of appeasement coming out of the Biden administration, I think we're due for uh, decades more of Chinese dominance in the world. Well, they're certainly uh, making their mark. Uh, all those illegals coming up to New York City. Councilman Joe Borelli is on si and set with me. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, Congresswoman, you guys in the House GOP, you passed a border security bill back in May. What do you think it will right. take to get the Democrats in the Senate to finally act? I mean, uh, now given th this unprecedented number of Chinese migrants that have come across the border, is there any new pressure or additional pressure that you guys can put on them? Well, I certainly hope so. The numbers certainly tell an, a very compelling story. Uh, the crisis that's happening in communities like New York, uh, the crisis that's happening in rural communities here in Iowa. I had a town hall a couple of weeks ago where a local sheriff and police chief came out and said, hey, we're seeing increased uh, massive amounts of methamphetamine and fentanyl coming into our small rural communities as a direct result of the border crisis. So um, I think Iowans have certainly had enough of this. Thank goodness our governor realizes that and has actually sent some resources down to the southern border order to help uh, where President Joe Biden is failing. Um, I've certainly called for Secretary Mayorkas to resign, and if he doesn't resign, he needs to be impeached because he is failing at doing his job. But again, House Republicans have delivered. We uh, passed a border security bill that will help not only supplement our Border Patrol agents so they can continue to do their jobs, but enable uh, the use of technology to protect not only our southern border, but our northern border as well. We don't want to ignore that. Um, so I think we've delivered the roadmap for what this country needs going forward. But this is a national security issue, and I just hope we're not too late and there's not something terrible that's in the works, whether it's uh, a Chinese plan or, or someone else. We know the Taliban has obviously been empowered uh, thanks to the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. So, um, again, those are my concerns. That's certainly what keeps me up as, at night as well. Well, and then, of course, President Biden failed to mention the 13 servicemen and women that died uh, in that disaster, at, disaster at, in Afghanistan at the airport. Um, I, you know... He just, just, I guess he forgot. I don't know. Anyway, Congresswoman Ashley Henson, it's always great to have you on the program. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Cheryl. All right.